so we'll start with the class and uh, this chapter is basically about the reproduction in visual technologies. It's quite interesting uh, subject, like a uh, topic uh, and chapter. So let's uh, go through and see what do we have in this chapter. It's quite interesting new uh, like topics we will learn in this chapter. And it's, it's very like related this chapter is quite related to graphic design students, to PR students, and also to multimeter students. And for other students, it, it can be also like very useful. So reproduction and visual technology. So let's see what do the reproduction means over here and what the visual technology is actually refer, like go to what part the visual technologies refer to. So both the conventions of imaging and concepts of the visual have changed throughout history through the, uh, through the evolution of art, photography, and electronic image imaging. So there are conventions, there are different, uh, you can say, rules, principles, and all those things in, in the field of visual design. And as we... Uh, have moved forward from time period to time period in different chronological order if you will see you will notice that there has been there have been a lot of changes there is a complete series of evolution how image changes from one style to another style how the technology changes basically if you talk about technology there is a lot of evolution going on in the field of technology so a viewer make, may, may make assumptions about the historical status of an image from its style, medium, and formal quality. So if we will go and trace back in the history, we can see that there, has, uh, there have been a lot of changes in terms of images, images style, its medium, and its formal quality. So this chapter is all about how images have been changed from, uh, an, or from an older time period to the contemporary time, from old to new. <clears throat> what were the changes inside the image? So that's what we will uh, see in this course. That's what we will learn in this course, basically. Now, examining the role of realism in art throughout history help us to see how images indicate changing ways of seeing the world. The concept of what makes an image realistic has changed throughout history and varies between cultures. So there were a lot of paintings made in older times. If we talk about, for example, 12th century, the paintings were quite different and people tried to achieve as realistic result as they can. From older times to the current times from time to time painters artists they tried to work hard they worked hard to create something as realistic they can make for example in 12th century they made a painting they tried to achieve a result of realistic uh, like realism people of that time really liked the painting when they saw it and then they said like yeah it is realistic but then Throughout the time when the century passed, they tried to make it more realistic so that people can, or the, the people of those time can see, see the painting and then they can say, yes, now it looks much more realistic than it was before. Then it will continue, continue, keep on continuing and people will look at it. They will try to uh, accept more realistic result. Painter will try their best to get more realistic result. So just like that, realism, was all always uh, improving from older times to the current time. So the development of perspective as a convention of European art during the 15th century Renaissance marks as fundamental shift in the depiction of reality. Now, if we look at the older paintings, in older paintings, there were no perspective. Let, uh, let me bring out some old paintings 
here. Okay, these are some, if you will see on the screen, 13th century paintings. In the 13th century paintings, you will see it is flat. For example, if I open this one, you will see it's a quite, it's a quite flat image. Okay, there is no perspective. Everything is either front or back or back or more back, something like that. But there wasn't anything realistic about it because there was no perspective there was no realism in it and let me show you other one and here you can see that also there is no perspective it looks flat this was realistic style of painting of thir uh, 13th century but when they reached to 15th century they tried uh, the painters try to achieve more realistic result. If you will notice over here, there is a perspective, like a three-dimensional three feel to it. So that's how they tried their best to make things more realistic. Like you can see here in this part, there is a perspective, a vintage point happening. It looks more realistic than it was in early 13th century paint paintings when things were quite uh, flat. So the linear perspective requires object to recede in size towards at least one vanishing point. So there is a one vanishing point here. You can see that this is the vanishing point and here things are going in a perspective. So this became 3D style of painting of 15th century to bring up more realism to the painting. And um, some mathematical, uh, you can say, uh, calculations were involved, geometrical calculations were involved, like uh, angles, nice way of showing the boxes and those kind of things. The European Renaissance has been defined as a time of intellectual and artistic resurgence that was fueled by a renewed interest in classical art and literature. So it was like a in Europe, in European uh, time, the Renaissance time of the European, so there was, as you know, different art movements, uh, time periods, Paleolithic, Renaissance, Baroque. So we are talking about Renaissance. So in Renaissance, there were a lot of intellect, uh, intellectual art, uh, artistic resurgence. And what they wanted is, is that they want to renew the interest of people in either it is an art or literature or any other thing that involves uh, these uh, mediums. So perspective emphasizes a scientific and mechanical view toward ordering and depicting nature and focuses a work of art toward a perceived viewer. So as I told you before, like before, there was some math involved to create a perspective. So this is how the perspective was created. And whoever were, uh, was watching it uh, feels like, yes, he is in the, uh, in, the, in, in the painting. So in order to make the painting more in, uh, immersive, they used to apply different kind of mathematical calculation to create a perspective accurately as possible near to the, uh, re like as closer to the reality. So this, through the development of perspective, the relationship of science, technology, and vision is firmly established in Western philosophy. That was the first time when science technology was involved in art. It got integrated and it got uh, people start collaborating with it. Now, this is uh, Raphael's School of Athens. And this is a painting by Raphael. It's a quite famous painting. And this was also fifth, uh, like, this was around 14th century, if I'm not wrong. So you can see that there are uh, students of Athens. And as you can see, there is a perspective involved. And 
also the perspective was with the geometrical lines there was a arc over here if you will see here at this stage there is an arc going around there is a perspective here in this area and also there is a clear vantage point there is a background also creating uh, like more like pushing or giving a more depth to the painting and people who are closer to the viewers are larger in size okay people who are far away are smaller in size before this wasn't uh like more like depicted this wasn't show i uh, if people are far or near they were all same sizes that's why it was all flat plus the objects the furniture on the ground are also in a 3d form just like you can see this box is more like an isometric cube here so the history of image production in western culture can be viewed in four periods so there are four different art periods where you can see things were changed first ancient art produced prior to the development of perspective in 1425 okay 30 in the late 13th century perspective idea was involved whatever perspective we are looking at right now here it was introduced in the late 13th century the age of perspective until the era of mechanical including the renaissance baroque rococo and romantic periods the modern era of technical development with the rise of uh, like mechanization and the industrial revolution and when the time passed when uh, we reached to around 17th and 18th century uh, there was a industrial revolution industries were made and machinery was heavily used to produce goods so that time was also a crucial time when we talk about realism in art so the postmodern era of electronic uh, electronic technology it, uh, like you can say the industry uh, like revolution the it, the time when the industries were uh, made it was basically a postmodern era of electronic technology so these were the four main art movements in the western culture of for you can say art periods in the in the in the western culture now it can be said that photography emerged as a visual technology because it fit certain emerging social concepts and it needs uh, and the needs of the time in combining scientific techni uh, technique uh, with art like a technique of perspective and also like uh, you can say uh, employing a mechanical device photography is many ways the visual technology that helped to usher in the modern age so photography also was a very uh, you can say uh, an art movement which bring a lot of change because photography was uh, was a like something that can capture the real life and first time a technology uh, like a technical device a device became a part of art whereas before brushes canvas and paints were counted as tools of art but photography became one of the parts so this was also a groundbreaking you can say uh, in introduction or invention in in the in the field of uh, technology many styles of modern art that follow the invention of uh, photography define the tradition of perspective so when the photography was introduced people had a different idea of reproducing reinventing the paintings one of the painting style was known as the impressionism which was derived from the photography when the artist saw the photographs 
they quickly believe that the most important thing in any painting is light. So they took the light and they tried to make the light, uh, they tried to imitate the light in their painting, focused mainly on the light instead of uh, focusing on realism. For instance, the style of impressionism shifted its focus to light and color and aimed visual like spontaneously. Okay. Oh, so what artists did, they focus more on the light from what direction the light is coming and the colors. And these two things were the one that the artist focused, more focused on rather than focusing on any other thing. After the Impressionism, the breaking art style was Cubism. Cubism was a style in which painted objects. Okay, by the way, the Impressionism was started and was introduced by two uh, acclaimed artists, Claude Monet, and there was one more artist. I, I, I hope you know the name. He was really famous, Vincent Van Gogh. So Vincent Van Gogh was one of the artists that a lot of art students have studied same as uh, uh like same as that the cubism was also a new groundbreaking art style and cubism was started with one of the greatest artists of contemporary style was picasso pablo picasso so cubism was a style in which painted objects as if they were being viewed from several different angles simultaneously and focused on the visual relationship between objects. This idea was here not to focus on light or color, but rather than that, focusing on the objects itself. The objects were created with the fragments of uh, shapes, pieces of small shapes, put them together along with text, along with uh, some like kind of collages of other cutouts and creating a painting out of it. So you can see here, it's basically the name of the painting is the uh, the Portuguese 1911 and was painted by Georges Braco. So according to Cubus, it is a means of depicting the restlessness and complicated process of human vision and a new way of looking at the real. Modernist, like basically uh, now with the Impressionism and with the Cubism, we are moving from Baroque and Renaissance art movement to the cube or to the modern art movement. So Cubism and Impressionism was the modern art movement. So modernist styles declared vision to be infinitely more subjective and complex. So um, unlike the like uh, more uh, like uh, Renaissance, Baroque, and Rocco, and uh, like Romanticism, and those kind of realism and those kind of art movements. Modern, uh, like mo modern painting, modern art movement, modern art was basically uh, more complex. So the idea that a perspective-based realistic view is actually no more than one of the many uh, one of the many ways of representing human vision has been taken further by many contemporary artists. So idea keeping in mind that you are looking at something re realistic, but from different art movement. So that's that thing that, uh, like you can say, style that that perspective was making things more and more uh, like challenging. So here you can see this image. What is the real image here? The real image here is the overall image. And what moment was this image taken? So where it was taken, we can say it was taken in uh, like in part of the desert. Where is the spectator of this image position? So we can say the people are standing here looking at the things. And the painting over here is a small boxes if you will notice it is painted in small areas of boxes 
Now, the reproduction of images. As now we have known how the images were evolved from older times to the new to the uh, contemporary times. Now, let's see how they are basically uh, kind of re like reproduced. Let's go through this. Just Okay, so uh, mechanical reproduction changes the meaning and value of an image and ultimately the role of images play in society. For instance, the invention of photography coincides with the cult of originality. So there were things, there were some compli like, uh, complications like, uh, and there were some uh, thinking of uh, people in society that things were uh, liked by some people were not liked by some people like photography is basically something that is capturing the originality in a quick manner rather than taking time to uh, like to the producers thus the value of one of a kind of art work is derived from its uniqueness and its role in the ritual people who used to paint were not happy with the invention of photography because for them it was something like it's a it's a cult it's a process that converts originality and to a like a photograph or something that you can see in a very quick manner of time because they used to paint it the like you know painting was produced in over months years but the photography was something like a different thing like a you just take a photograph and few number of uh, like in hours you will get the photograph in older uh, like in older times like it takes hours to produce an image not unlike so that's what one thing uh where they have in their mind so this uh, uh, like aura of image is a quality that makes it seem authentic because of its unique presence in time and space so this is how people use uh, to take photography as a uh, artwork it, it, uh, like an art type so the reproduction of images the concept of authenticity refers to something that is thought to be gen uh, genuine or or for or original paradoxically we live in a world in which the concept of authenticity is routinely reproduced packaged bought and sold so here if you if we see that image need to be original people used to think like okay let's uh like whatever image they are looking at they thought it to be original because it was taken by a photograph but soon photographer asked the actors the model to stage for example in this image he's uh like swirling the rope but in reality, this rope is not uh, like uh, he's swirling. It's like there is a metal string around it. It holds it in the air. So it looks like he's swirling it. So it was staged. So these kind of things were created at that time. And people tend to still believe that it is original. Now, many copies in ex uh, uh, can exist of a photographic image of which their value lies not in their uniqueness but in their aesthetic cultural and social worth the original however is more valuable in both financial and social terms than the copies some argue that the higher value of uh, value comes not from the uniqueness of the image as one of the kind but rather from it being the original of many copies through reproduction, an image can now be seen in many different contexts. Now, when we started this chapter, I told you the chapter is reproduction and the visual technology. So visual technologies we have uh, went through in the previous slides, the perspective, the way of reproducing the images, like impressionism, light, and the color was involved in cubism the shapes were involved so visual technologies so we are talking about the reproduction of the images so reproduction of the images is something like we have an original image and that original image are now reproduced many times 
okay like if you know a mona lisa painting mona lisa painting is reproduced in many times artist uh, uh like they have been uh not copying uh, like uh, copying you can you can uh, you will say you can say they are reproducing it in a different style okay like a comical version of mona lisa dark version of mona lisa romantic version of mona lisa so they are making their own a version of the painting of the Mona Lisa. So that is basically the reproduction, which has become more and more common these days. So here we are talking about the screen. In 1893, this painting was painted by Edward Munch. And it was a very famous painting. This is the original one. The one here in the middle is the original one. Now, this was reproduced many times. Statues, okay, pens, even in the movie Mask, there it was a depiction of the of the face of this person, okay, the painting, the scream, okay. Also, in the cartoons, like in the, you can say animation, like uh, Simpsons. So this is how the images are reproduced in their own version. So this is not known as copying it, but re rather than copying it is known as reproducing the original artwork in different styles, in different ways. Now, reproduce images as, as politics. Uh, images, old main uh, uh, like artworks were reproduced in time of World War I and World War II, they were reproduced to create or to like, criticize the politics of that time, to criticize the, you can say, or mock the politicians of that time. So it was also reproduced for this purpose. So propaganda can refer to any attempt to use word and images to promote particular ideas and persuade people to believe certain concepts. So, as you know, like propaganda, what is the propaganda? Propaganda to take something and make it believable. So that people will think, okay, this is uh, like real. Okay. An agenda which is mutated, an agenda which is basically kind of uh, like you can say twisted. So this definition could also fit advertising images. This is what it is meant by the use of images as politics. So same thing at advertising, it is being used. So this is John Hurtful, Adolf as Superman. So he swallows gold and spits out the tin plate. So this is 1932 a painting. They showed uh, like Adolf Hitler as Superman. So you can see that he is like there is a gold in his in his uh, like stomach in his throat. You can see gold coins coming good going down from here. Okay, so that means he and he can throw out the tin plates. Okay, so that's the idea of it. So it was a mock a criticism from the artist uh, himself. Text can dramatically change to signification of the image and can ask us to look at the image differently. So this is appropriation. And appropriation is also known as the culture jamming. You all know we have learned about it and you also have, a, have an assignment about it. Okay. So this, uh, like forget about this text right now. If we don't look at this text, this image is basically an, an advertisement of Marlboro. Taking the same font Marlboro uses for their advertisement, the artist wrote here, I miss my lung, Bob. Because, you know, cigarettes, it affects your lungs. So he's saying, I miss my lung, Bob, with the same text that Marlboro uses. So basically, what is this? This is appropriation, culture jamming, criticizing. And is an existing advertisement. 
this is also uh, like uh, culture jamming or appropriation is also a part of the modern art or you can say that uh, the contemporary art now visual technologies and the phenomenology what is phenomenology phenomenology is the belief that all knowledge and truth derives from subjective human experience and not solely from things themselves so we whatever we see first thing uh, that comes in in, in, uh, in our mind and the way we see it is through our own experience from where we have uh, so what we have gone through so we see things more as our from our experience rather than what that actual image is so this is a criticism of a rational age of scientific inquiry perception memory and imagination are key concerns of phenomenology anything that you look from your experience related to your perception your memory your imagination is what is the phenomenology phenomenology offers a means to examine the distinct material uh, like like the materialities of how various media such as photography film and television affect the viewers experience of it and its impact on live body of a live uh, like lived body of the viewer so when you look at like the television different media uh, medias you're looking at films photography you're looking at basically phenomenology is involved in it like uh, and this is how it affects people it affects the viewers who are watching the television or uh, reading the newspaper or reading the magazine so phenomenology is one of the part that is used uh, in in the media field to affect people's uh, ideas or or to reproduce their perceptions since the 1980s uh, now we are talking about the digital image and you know the digital image is basically taken from the digital camera so this, since the 1980s the development of digital images began to radically transform the meaning of images analog images bear a physical correspondence with their material reference and are defined by properties that express value along a continuous scale such as gradation of tone uh like, sorry like the gradation of tone so analog images were the one that were produced in a photo lab using films photographic paper and those and and those kind of method when they are in the dark room producing it so there was nothing digitally involved that means it was very very hard to manipulate the image okay to fabricate the image it was it wasn't uh, like possible whatever you have right now photoshop effects wasn't possible when uh, when the analog images were produced now in the term in the world of digital images dig digital images are encoded with bits of information and can and can be easily stored manipulated and reproduced so you can reproduce you can make as, as many copy you can so a copy of a digital image is exactly like the original there is no change like there is no difference in it so the digital uh, like the digital image gains its value from its accessibility malleability and information status now in this image you can see that it's a, it's a quite famous photograph uh, it, it it became famous and people uh, used to say that like this guy was standing where the airplane was flying and it was during the 9/11 but it turned out to be it was just a fall it was a hoax it was not a, a real image so most digital images and simulations cannot be uh, said to have been in the presence of the real world that they depict how does this affect the idea of photographic truth what impact does this have on news and historical images these are the question now that we have when the digital image became the part of our society how do we know that this image is real it is not real it is what it is just a you can say a, like a fabricated manipulated images a, like a uh, in the real image just the plane was uh, dropped and then it was reproduced and it was forwarded to as many people and whoever saw this started to believe that okay 
this is real this actually happened in 9-11 but in reality this wasn't the same thing and like it 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 wasn't what it was so it is very challenging nowadays to identify what is real and what is not real so the discovery that a news organization has altered an image often sparks controversy and debate these organizations reputations were based on modern notions of photographic truth that clashed with the digital possibilities for image manipulation so especially in news in magazine also in the uh, in the world of uh, like fashion where there are some models their pictures has been manipulated to make them look more beautiful so it's very hard to identify what is real and what is not real now let's check uh, see what is virtual space and interactive images virtual images are simulations that represent ideal or constructed rather than actual condition and can be both analog and digital so what is virtual sp uh, space and interactive images these are the images which are not uh, uh, taken by the camera or recorded by the camera these are produced digitally like from the scratch from computer like you are producing something in a 3d software or in a um like a like to like 2d imaging software the virtual reality vr describe the way that user experience the computer world in science and computer games Virtual reality systems attempt to create an experience in which the user feels as if he or she is physically incorporated in the world of represented on all sensory levels. If we know about the virtual reality, what it is, it's a immersive technology where you uh, feel like you are in a uh, like a zone where uh, like things are in reality. There are many devices right now. Uh, available HTC Vive you have Oculus you have a uh, Samsung VR gear uh, you have Microsoft HoloLens what are these these are devices that helps you to immerse in a digital space and they are uh, also used in various fields like uh, in medical it is used to simulate a uh, like like a uh, environment where you can operate a virtual patient so or in a fire uh, like a fire department uh, it is highly used to train uh, like firemen how to put off the fire so these include space makers hearing aids flight simulators and game systems and these kind of things uh, virtual uh, space actually uses virtual technology of er now, virtual space exists in opposition to the rules of traditional physical space. So there is no physical space, you are in a virtual space. There is nothing tangible there. Everything is digital, like digitally produced. The users can navigate the space to create their own individual pathway. How can traditional cultural notions of authorship remain in place with the introduction of digital image and virtual space? So it's a quite critical question that how the, the traditional artists now can uh, cope up with the art will the artist's value will be down or uh, or or they might lose their like kind of credibility or they will just become like a liability or these kind of things so let's see uh what happens in future uh from here so this is whole chapter about the like reproduction and the you know, like uh, visual technologies so just let me know if any one of you have a uh, like question over here any question regarding this chapter
okay good so uh next chapter we will go through the mass media and the public sphere so we'll see what a mass mass media uh, like pr students if you uh, if you're if you are a pr student you already know what the mass media is but basically uh, uh what more interesting here is the public sphere so we will uh check on this in in the uh, in the next class so till then um just uh, have a nice weekend and let me know if you have any question regarding the assignment the second assignment uh one common question uh students were asking like how we juxtapose very simple way to do that is you take an original image which you think can be a uh it can be criticized okay for example a fast food restaurant usually fast food are considered unhealthy food so how you can criticize that unhealthy food okay maybe you, in one picture in the original picture you can uh just uh what you can do you have to put an original advertisement on the left side and on the right side take the same original advertisement and change it change the text of it change the image of it anything you can do just like here we have seen the marlboro okay what was that uh, that the old text was removed and the new text was added i miss my lung bob criticized it this is basically the appropriation so either left you can put the original then right you can put the one uh, you would criticize or put original on the top and on the bottom you can put the uh, one that you will change or uh, like uh, you will like manipulate or criticize okay so take care everyone we'll meet in the next class and have a nice weekend once again.